Afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I can see the participants' numbers are going up, so we'll get started. So, thank you, everybody, for joining us. This afternoon's session is going to be more orientated around some virtual interventions type um, work we can do using technologies. Um, it encompasses some of the, the technologies we've discussed on the previous webinar as well. So, everybody will be able to, to, to watch that on the EP Reach Out. Um, Sarah and Nicole have asked me to explain that there is a chat function. So if anybody's got any questions as we go along, feel free to, to pop them in the chat box and we should have a couple of minutes at the end of the webinar just to quickly go through some of the questions and answer them if we can. If not, um, we'll take some of the questions and we'll, we'll answer them on either the EP Reach Out Twitter or my own Twitter later on this evening. So without further ado, we will get started. So <clears throat> without further ado, sorry, we'll get started. So first thing I want to talk about, and a lot of people are enthusi enthusiastic about at the moment, is the one-page profile. Let me just get rid of this at the top. The one-page profile that I have shared on Twitter. So I've used a visual communication platform called Powtoon. Now, if you're not aware of Powtoon, it, it, it just, or you've not seen the, the animated one page profile, it just lets, it, it's a, a website that allows you to create animated videos. And there's a huge range of templates available. Um, there's a basic membership, which is free, so you can sign up for it. Um, and you can also sign up for a full membership if maybe your local authority or, or you want to do a lot more with it. So I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration of Powtoon and some of the things that you're able to make up on the actual website itself. But I found it really useful in regards to the one page profile that I've made. So let me just share this with you. So this is Powtoon itself. And once you've signed up, this won't be the screen that you initially get. You'll have to sign up. But once you're signed up, this will be the screen that you face with. It'll have your name at the top. And all you need to do, there's a, there's a lot of information which is overwhelming, but to get started, we just click create over here in the corner and it'll give you a couple of more suggestions again. And based on what you're making the video for, whether it's a presentation, whether it's posts on Twitter, Facebook, etc., I tend to just use the horizontal one. So when we click the horizontal one, it opens up with a screen like this. And this is where you're essentially able to start your Powtoon. So hopefully by now, let me just move this out of the way. Hopefully by now you'll have downloaded your Bitmoji Chrome extension, which will be up here at the top. And you're able to add Bitmojis straight to the screen. So what you need to do is open your Bitmoji extension, type in whatever type of Bitmoji you would like. Hopefully technology is on our side. So I'm just going to type in a wave. Unfortunately, what you're not able to just drag your Bitmoji onto the screen because it's an animated um, software through a website. So what you need to do is you need to right click whatever one you want, mm -hmm. save image as, and then save it to a folder on your drive. And then over here on the right hand side, there's lots of different things that you can add. You can have background, text, characters. If we just click on images, pop up with lots of different things. So there's free images, there's images you can take, but where we want our Bitmoji, so upload image, mm -hmm. upload, and you can find the Bitmoji that you want. So I'm just going to find a wave. I'm going to include that once I move this out of the way because it won't let me press it. Do, 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 do. And we'll open that onto the actual Powtoon itself. Again, you can resize it. It's very similar to the virtual e-rooms. Resize, put it in. We'll put this one over here and you can keep doing that. So whatever bit mode you want, you can add it to the screen. And what happens is down here is a toolbox. So what I'll do is close that. We will add another image and all the, all the animated Powtoon software does is it creates overlays. So we'll go for an opposite wave over here. And as you work through your one page profile or whatever you make the Powtoon actually for, and I'll describe a little bit later on 
some of the different things that you can do with that, with Powtoon. Um, upload image. We've got rid of that last one because it linked. Technology is not working with us, it's working against us. Well, that's the same one, but I'll use it just to show you anyway. We'll add a third image, which will be a central version of my Bitmoji. And then it's all about getting the timings accurate. Once that's added, there we go. So down here on the toolbar is where your timings are. So for instance, I might want this to come in at one second. I might want this one to come in at two seconds. I might want this one to come in at three seconds. You can also add texts and overlays. So if you wanted a text in there, we could just add a, a simple hello. And we could get the hello to come in at the same time as the person in the middle, which you'll see now is overlapped. Now, if I wanted to make that separate, I'd click on them and I'd drag one over if I wanted that to come in separately, but it's all about working out the timings. Now, a fantastic one that I've seen is, and, and some of the feedback which I received from, from parents when, when, I, when I made this and put it out, is maybe having a voiceover, and I've seen a fantastic one done by a, a, a tech, I can't remember the name, apologies, um, and she's put voice notes on and added over, which is down here on sounds. So you're able to add voiceovers on the slides, which is absolutely fantastic for some SEN children or children and young people that you're working with as well. And as, as you go through your slides, you're able to play them. So if we take this button and put it back, we can play and we can see the timings and if they all work. Now, if some of the timings don't work, we can pause that, take it back, change whatever we need to. So I want the hello to pop on with the middle person. We can play that. And we can see that it all works well before moving on to the next slide. Now, as you build up your slides, you will then come to something very similar to this, which is my animated one page profile, which I'm just going to show you quickly. So there's just one way that you can create an animated one page profile. And I've been using this with, with children and young people instead of the, the paper template um, just to gather, gather some feedback. And the feedback that I initially got was the interaction, participation and engagement with the video because of the noise and the lights and the bitmojis and everything is, is vastly improved compared to the one page profile itself. So I begin using both in conjunction with each other, really. Um, but there's, there's, there's various other sort of things that people can use Powtoon for. Um, it could be, be used to introduce a service or a team. Um, it could be used as training. It could be used to introduce a topic, for instance. And again, as I said in the previous webinar, it's, it's ultimately up to you as an individual to get creative and play around with it. I'm just going to show you a, a, another thing that I've created with Powtoon. And this will just give you a sense of what, you, what you're what you able to make using Powtoon. So this is a video um, just introducing a local authority service, for instance, or any other service. All the names are just made up names and all of the characters are taken from characters within the Powtoon, which, you, which are free and you're able to get.
I'll just quickly show you that one. But again, that just shows you the type of things that you're able to make with Powtoon. And I know educational psychology as a profession isn't widely known and um, not a lot is understood about what we do as educational psychologists. And I just feel personally that this would be an absolutely fantastic tool for schools, parents, children and young people, and even other professionals to share the types of things we do, things to look forward to doing with meeting us in regards to tasks, activities, and all that type of thing. So that is Powtoon in, in, a, in a bit of a nutshell within 10 minutes for you. But again, if you've got any other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat box or feel free to, to, to um, connect with me on Twitter and I'll, I'll go through some of the questions that you might have as well. So we'll go back to our presentation. So now we're going to move on to some of the virtual interventions that I've been running personally. There may be other interventions that people are, are, are running um, with different various forms of technology. Um, but these are just the ones that I've been using. So if we have a little look, so the three that we're going to discuss are comic strip conversations, Lego therapy, and finding alternative models with hope. So paths. Um, the first one we're going to take a look at is comic strip conversations. So I've used this particular app, which is called, um, this website, sorry, called Storyboard. And I found it absolutely fantastic for using comic strip conversations. It can be adapted for use with social stories um, and, and, and the characters. They can be used for, for some of the personal construct activities within the last webinar we've done. So things like kinetic family drawing or the ideal self. If children and young people that you're working with don't have the capacity to draw on paint or some of the other whiteboard interactive materials like Jamboard, Storyboard can be a really good thing to use with them because it has lots of things that they're able to use. And I'll, I'll show you a quick demonstration of this as well now. So if we go back to our internet, so this is Storyboard. So again, you'll, you'll not be greeted with this sort of page before sign up. You'll have to sign up. Again, it's free. There's a, there's a paid version which gives you more to work with, but the basic version is absolutely brilliant for, for comic strip conversations that I've been using anyway. So when, you, when you've signed in, you just create a storyboard and you will come to this sort of, you, this without the, your, say, please save your storyboard, you'll come to this, <coughs> which is just a blank screen. Let me just move this out the way so we can use it. So at the top, you'll see here, lots of different headings. And these are all of the headings that we're gonna use and lots of the scenes um, that, that are within within storyboard. Uh, lots of the scenes that you'll you'll see within the school or um, home setting that, that children will associate with the comic strip conversations anyway. Um, so this particular one here, school, and it has lots of different images for you to use. So I'm just, for the, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm just gonna take this one. I'm gonna add it to all three. Now you can, Comics, I tend to use um, six as comic strip conversations, but you can add these as much as you like and go nine, 12, any, any number of ones that you like. Again, characters up here. And the good thing is about storyboard is it gives that interactive element again with the child or young person. You don't have to sit and click everything. You can hand remote access over to the child and let them create their, their animated version of themselves using this. So we might want some children Again, let the child pick the one they want. So they might select this child and then this might be Bob and we'll have, I don't know, Jake who is also in there as well. And it works really well with all of the elements of comic strip conversation. So the speech bubbles, the thought bubbles and the different colors that you can use to, to, to express emotions and feelings. And, and I absolutely love this as a tool. I've used it quite a lot. Um, so for instance, Textables, you can go through textables, you can go through shapes. And what I really like about the textables is like what I've just said, it relates to um, the elements of comic strip conversation. So if we wanted to use speech bubbles, for instance, we'll drag one of these over and we, we can type away. We could say, hello, Jay. Again, we can size these to how we want to fit the screen. And as we work through, good thing is about the characters, they can, the, the children, if you give the remote access to the children, they can change everything about hair, skin, eyes, shape, pants, shoes. Again, some dynamic assessment type stuff in there as well. So 
when we're, when we're working with this social understanding, conversations conversations are really good for understanding rules and boundaries, um, or explaining rules and boundaries for children, especially um, children diagnosed with AST. It could also be preemptive strategies. I've used them quite a lot with secondary school pupils. And we find different social situations confusing and don't know how to interact in those social situations. Um, and I've also used them for consequential thinking. So children who struggle with allowing themselves processing time to think of the consequences before they actually do something. Um, and as we go through these, what I really like about the speech bubbles and the text that you add, you can add the feelings and emotions, again, linked to the comics to conversations elements of the different colours. So red might mean aggressive, blue might mean calm, and we can change these as we go through. And as you work through the comic strip conversation, so this is one I have already done, I've changed all the names, but this was a comic strip conversation. And as you can see, the colors, all of the um, speech bubbles and thought bubbles. So Ben here, for I mean, Jake here, for instance, he was happy. Yes, he had the balls, but really he was thinking, I want to beat Ben. And then this was a social situation in which two boys ended up getting in trouble, um, one pushing the other boy. And as you see, as we go through, again, it, it, it sort of encompasses all of the elements of the comic strip conversation. And I've, I've, I've used this tool quite a lot because if you're doing com comic strip conversations online, you're trying to use paint or another inter interactive material, it's fundamentally up to the skills of the young person to be able to draw. I mean, comic strip conversations, don't, you don't have to be the greatest artist. Um, in person, I've done plenty of um, stiff men. I'm not the greatest artist, but I've just found this is a, a much better visual emphasis of the situation and and, and the child or young person sharing their views about mm -hmm. around either what happened or how they perceive something to happen in, in a social situation as well. So, do, 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 share. that's our comic strip conversations in a nutshell as well. So we'll move on to planning alternative models with hope. So this is the, the path which I've, I've been doing as well. It's normally done with adults or services involved um, with a child, sort of like a multidisciplinary type thing. But I, I've, I've been using an adaptive path um, intervention, focusing on, on particularly on hope theory with the aim of increasing a child or young person's agency pathway for, towards a desired goal. Um, and I, I initially got this idea from Dr. Tim Cox up in Newcastle. Um, and some of the work he's been doing around this has been absolutely fantastic. And what I, I say in that, or an analogy which Tim used, which has really, really stuck with me in regards to the path, is that the path template itself, um, there's lots of different variations, but the path template itself is like a car sat-nav. And hope theory is like the individual instructions to your specific destination. And that's just something that Tim Cox actually come up with. So thank you very much, Tim. And it's it's sort of stuck with me in, whenever I'm using the path template with individuals. So again, I'll show you this one. This is a path template that I've come up with. And it just encompasses some of the bit modes. Now, this is one I've come up with, with and you'll probably see as you go through some of the, the wishes and the positives possible and some of the the different things on there that this is my own personal one so i made this back in august september time and um, just as a way of concentrating on the doctor application and getting to where i need to be um, and I, I find it a really good reflective tool for my own personal use really um, and i know many educational psychologists and other people in educational psychology find it really beneficial for that point of view as well but i've been using it with children and young people online um, just a sort of a, um, a motivational tool, really, for, for children. I've, I've recently used it for a child who wanted to increase their, their sense of belonging in, in the wider world and, and, uh, and school context itself. I've used it for a child who is lacking motivation, um, currently in year 10, lacking motivation to finish school, and it's sort of given them that motivation to, to get to the wish or the mini wish that, that they, they want to achieve. Um, I've also used it as a supervision tool within the local authority I work in now with, with a couple of assistants. Um, and it's been real, I find it a really beneficial tool. And so did the assistants really were from the feedback. Um, just to get to know my colleagues. I mean, we have supervisions all the time, we get to know each other, but I find the path templates a really good tool to get to know them and, and get to know their ambitions and, and what they 
really passionate about. Um, and, and I know the feedback from from the assistants within my local authority was exactly the same as well. So uh, it would be a great tool to use as a, 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 as a service or or, or even on a, a, an educational psychology training programme where um, people need to introduce themselves. And it's the same as the one-page profile. You can work on sort of strengths that other people see in you as well. Um, and again, I mentioned there's lots of different templates, and this is a template from um, Dr. Tim Cox himself, which is the template I initially took and, and, and changed as well. But um, the if anybody wants the, the, my particular path template, it's a presentation similar to the one-page profile, so I'm more than happy to send that out to people. But this is another template which is available from um, Dr. Tim Cox on his Agents of Hope podcast, and the link is there below. So if anybody wants to access um, Dr. Tim Cox's version, if you haven't done so already, you can access that as well. Um, and then moving on to Lego therapy, which is something I am really, really passionate about, and the whole lockdown implications and, and not being able to do Lego therapy in person um, really affected me back in March when it first materialized in the first lockdown. Uh, so I was re really passionate. I just learned all about Lego therapy, and I was getting up and going. And I actually managed to find a technology and a resource online in which you could use Lego therapy with um, groups of two or three. So focusing on mode two or three itself. And then Google Chrome decided to take it down in July. So it no longer existed, which was massively, massively frustrating. But what I did do after having a little search now, it, for those of you who are um, aware of Lego therapy, it's a social communication tool um, around social competence. And it works really well for, um, it was developed initially for, um, children with ASD and social communication difficulties but it can be adaptive for varying different um, difficulties so I've worked with children who have behavioural difficulties ADHD, ADHD um, people, children who do have some social communication difficulties and it works really really well with them types of children um, but it can be adapted to, to however you see fit really and what I did do was I come across this particular website which I'll share with you now and this is just a simple Lego building website. Now, although I have to emphasize, you're not able to run a full Lego therapy session in, in regards to groups. Um, what I found is this particular website um, works really well for working on the, the especially at a mode one level. So working on the prerequisite skills um, for children and young people to, to, to participate in mode two and mode three. So as we have gone in between and out in and out of lockdowns, I found this a really beneficial tool for working with people virtually. Um, and, in, and in Liverpool, but in our local authority service, we were able to visit schools right up until the last lockdown. So th this too was great for working with children and young people virtually, giving them the prerequisite skills. Um, so sort of looking at the Lego language, positional language, um, the building capabilities and again you can hand remote access over to the child or young person and, and work on different skills so are they able to give instructions to, to myself and up here it's just really simple and effective you have a couple of colours you have large tiles and small tiles and undo button and clear um, and as you work through these you can work through simple things like some of the things I've worked on if I just change this some of the things I've worked on are just simple building towers so if I start a particular child off and I choose a, a red um, a red brick, and I just want them to place that red brick on the top left-hand corner, and I want it to cover eight studs, a particular child, I'd hand remote, remote access over to them, and the child will do this. And it pops up as like a virtual version of the Lego here. And then just simple building on their sort of positional language, are they able to put a white brick on top of the red brick, covering all eight studs? Again, the child will do this. Now, you might have some difficulties if we undo that. The child might do that and have an overhang, in which case you can explain it again, undo that, and they can go back. And we can work on this together. So there's lots of different things we can work. So I've worked on building towers, 
um, building bridges, building structures and asking the young person to copy it. So for instance, I might build a structure like this. It doesn't seem to be working now, technology. Right, so we'll go there, 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 and there. Now that's just a simple tower. And what I would ask a young person to do is build a replication of that tower on the opposite side. And and, and what I've also found, as well as sort of giving children the prerequisite skills for this, now you can use your imagination with it. There's lots of different materials out there. There's lots of simple Lego instructions also on the Lego website um, in regards to animals, um, which simply only use blocks, which is what you can use on this. Um, and they're really good instructions that you can use when working with the, the child or young person. But what I've also found is that sort of linked to the last webinar on some of the dynamic assessment type stuff, this this particular website, you can, you, you're able to work on. Children love building Legos and love building with the blocks. So you can work on lots of um, elements of dynamic assessment with this particular website as well. So receptive language, are they, are they able to follow instructions, similarities and differences? So... This, this particular one um, where it's a, a tower build and the, the child or young person has to replicate it. What are the similarities and differences in the, in the structures once they've made it? And are they able to justify them responses and are they able to also go back and, and change them? Um, visual spatial awareness, problem solving ability. So you can make tasks as difficult or as easy as you like. I mean, the, the first session normally is, is, is very, very easy just to check that they're able to put um, bricks next to or on top of or under that type of thing but what I found really beneficial was I worked into in, virtually interactively with specific children on on the prerequisite skills using this and then when I was able to visit in school and we were able to collaboratively build in, in focus on mode two or three the child or young person had learned, learned all of the prerequisite skills by using this application before we put them into a mode two or a mode three. I'm still looking for, so I've seen something with, if I'm not mistaken, it's Nottingham EPS and they've used um, video recorders um, for Lego therapy. And it looks really, really fantastic. Some of the stuff they're doing, but it looks like you need extensive knowledge of different technologies and your own camera and et cetera. So if anybody has come up with different varying ways in using any of these sort of, interventions I'd, I'd absolutely love to know um so please do reach out so we will get pod in the pun ep reach out um so that's lego therapy in a nutshell so i just wanted to quickly discuss um from the last webinar the flippity resources so myself and sarah have had a little conversation around flippity and the use of flippity and the amount of people who are making flippity resources to use with children and young people interactively. So this is just one that I've, I've made. And if you've watched the last webinar, you'll be aware of this anyway. And this is just a simple strengths activity in which the, the child or young person can sort through. Um, and this is one Sarah has come up with as well. And, and these are really fantastic interactive things that you can use with the child or young person. But I've seen um, a lot of flippity resources that other people are making and I've been absolutely blown away by the the level of complexity and technology that people have used when coming up with the flippity resources and when I had a conversation with Sarah is we don't want all of the effort and resources to go to waste because one they can be tight quite time consuming and two people are putting a lot of effort into them so what we've come up with is a google document now, I'm going to share this link. It'll be on Twitter. I'm also sharing it within the presentation. But it's going to be a document in which anyone from the educational profession or educational psychology itself will have access to this Excel document through Google Sheets. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able... I, there's two ways I could go about it. I could add people into the group and they could add things on. Or I can leave it open and people can add whatever they like. Now, I'm sort of putting that out there because the responsibility lies on the people that, that add the things. I mean, I can see the people from my end who add certain things. But what would be fantastic is if the EP community and, and, and other professionals within education come together and collaboratively work together with the Flippity resources. 
And what I'm asking for is if anybody has made a Flickrty resource, feel free to, to add it to this um, Google Sheets document. And hopefully we'll have a whole bank of resources that people are able to access. So as we go through here, as you'll see on the screen, it's just got your name, the Flipperty link, what the actual resource is, a description of it, and the age range linked to that particular um, Flipperty resource. And I just think it'll be a really fantastic tool for people within education, especially people who aren't technologically savvy or a little bit skeptical, skeptical of using Flipperty. Um, for, for, for working virtually with children and young people as well. And I just think it'll be a really fantastic resource for that. So there's the, there's the link on the bottom for the actual um, Flipperty Google Sheets document. So if anybody would like to add any of the resources to that, feel free to go along to that. EPV chat will share it and I'll also share it on my um, Twitter as well. And that's my Twitter there for you, which is AEP Horton. So feel free to, to add me if anyone's got any questions about any of the different intervention type stuff or got any ideas on how I can sort of progress the interventions that I'm working with virtually, please feel free to contact me. Um, but that at the moment is, is pretty much everything I'm doing in a nutshell when I'm working with children and young people. And I'd just like to say that I think, I mean, the, the messages of, of that I've received from Twitter um, from numerous people within the educational psychology profession have been massively, massively overwhelming. So I'd just like to thank each and every one of you. And can I just say that I, I personally, I think each and every one of you are doing a fantastic job given the current circumstances. So keep it up, give yourself a pat on the back and thank you very much for coming along today. Hope it's been beneficial. Have a lovely evening. Thank you.